I would say you guys look so beautiful, but I can't see any of you here. <laughs> there are silhouettes. There's about 100 silhouettes of, uh, I, I imagine, the energy is beautiful, so if there is a beautiful energy coming off someone, there must be a beautiful person behind it. So thank you all for coming, and uh, how many feel fresh this morning? All right. Um, we hope by the end of this you'll feel fresher. Okay? So um, thank you, Katie. Thank you, Wonderlust, for this wonderful invitation. Uh, tomorrow, as she mentioned, one of my first pillars you'll hear about today is food, and tomorrow we're going to really dive deep into our what we call Graham's Dozen or Baker's Dozen. Uh, which is 13, by the way, tips for healthy eating based upon how we act, what we eat and how we eat and why we eat. So, but today we're going to be talking about fresh prescription to health. And so I'm on a mission, right? I'm on a mission to change health care. How many people here are sick and tired of being treated by a sick care system, right? And we have to change the whole thing. We have to flip the script. That's what I call it. And that's why my RX, right, is really a prescription to health. Because we believe that the main focus of healthcare should be health, right? And you have this thing called an insurance card, which brings you no healthcare, right? It brings you, heaven forbid you get sick, now you have something you can show, right? And that's the whole premise we're trying to do is flip this paradox, flip the script. You know why? Because of this here. So this is a study out of John Hopkins University. Number three cause of death, and some people believe the first, number one cause of death in America is medical errors. Third leading cause of death beside, behind heart disease and cancer. Now, I don't want to throw anyone under the bus, and I really believe, I've been teaching medicine, I've been uh, a program director and associate professor of medicine, and it's not the people. It's a system that we're trying to buck. It's a system that is making us do more test more, and prescribe more in the setting of a very broken healthcare system. So number three cause of death in America is, is medical error. And I put this up here on purpose because I hope it shocks you a little bit. And any, if anyone's watching the popular press in the last couple of weeks, you're seeing this epidemic, right? So this, guns are safer than prescription drugs. So I just want to highlight these two tops here, prescription drug overdose and drug overdose. So this is legal drugs, right? These are prescription drugs that your physician will prescribe you, um, this overdose. And in fact, in 2013, the, it was estimated about 40,000 people were dying from prescription drugs per year, which is the slippery gateway or the gateway to narcotics and opioid prescription use. And then what happens after that, you get onto heroin and then you get into really big, 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 big trouble. So this was 2013 data, and I purposely put this up here, and I know you guys can't see it, but I want to just show you here. So 10,000 deaths per year, 1980, okay? 10,000. 2015, this is just published last week, 65,000 people die each year from drug overdose, okay? And I mentioned before, it's a slippery slope. Once you get on a narcotic and you don't get off of it, you will find yourself on heroin. 75% of the time within five years. And on top of that, this is what I was saying before, we are expected to do more, prescribe more, all within a very set limited time with the patient. So what's happening now is also $40,000, $40,000, 40,000 doctors die each year from suicide. One in every two physicians experience burnout and if you talk to a physician, they are almost at their wit's end. And in fact, that is why I left a large academic healthcare setting to start my own practice. Because I figured if I'm gonna do it to myself, if I'm gonna get burnt out, I'm gonna do it to myself. No one else externally is gonna do it onto me. And in fact, a published study yesterday was that the top earners in medicine are not doctors. They're the administrators that are running the show, right? So you're putting profits over people, which is, I think, crazy. And it's just not physicians, also, Healthcare workers, nurses, physical therapists, just about everyone that works in healthcare is burnt out. So as my wife always says, how can you give from an empty cup? Right? How can we care for someone when we are not caring for ourselves? Now I promise you the second half of this talk is gonna be a lot more funnier. <laughs> so this is the buzzkill, right? I, get, I bring you down to bring you back up, right? <laughs> and on top of that, right, we got eight minutes, right? We got eight minutes with our patients. Why? Because it's the volume. Right? It's not value. We're not valuing anything. We're, we get paid and reimbursed by volume. So the more people you see, the more money you make. Right? That's a simple recipe for, I believe, what we're doing today. 
having a society that is completely sick, right? Eight minutes. Why? Because in eight minutes, you really can't talk to the patient, right? You can't talk to them about what they're eating, how they're relaxing, how they're exercising, how they're sleeping, and how they're experiencing love and joy and happiness. What you got to do in eight minutes is diagnose it and then give a pill for that ill, right? That's the whole game. That's the whole game, right? So the problem we have with this model is that we are just a bunch of people with mops, right? And just mopping up the symptoms, right? Never getting to the root cause of your, what I call, dis-ease, right? Never getting to that cause simply because you just don't have the time. You don't have the focus of it all. And sometimes you just have to turn off the faucet, right? Because we can get multiple, multiple mops. And in medicine, we call them ologists, right? So we have cardiologists, endocrinologists, otolaryngologists, endocrinologists, right? I look at it as one whole ology, right? You're one whole person, and someone's got to look at that whole point. Because we're going to send you to a heart doctor, they're going to look at the heart. They're going to look, send you to an ear doctor, they're going to look at the ear. It's not going to get you healthy. And I think what where we're all experiencing, and I love the fact that you're all here because you are actually seeking health, right? You guys are taking a proactive stance for your own well-being by attending Wonderlust. And, and this is a study, um, a, a study done by a good friend of mine, Andrew Weil. Patients are incre increasingly frustrated with what they perceive as a set limit of options provided by allopathic medicine. Allopathic medicine is Western conventional medicine, which basically amounts to prescription drugs and surgery and want more choices for wellness and healing than allopathic can provide. You guys believe that you guys, am I in the right page with this audience here? Right? We want more, more than just a pill for an L in surgeries. And this is one of my favorite quotes by Einstein. Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. And I think that's where, where we are. We're an inflection point right now or a tipping point with healthcare, right? Because we're all now feeling it in our pockets, right? 40% increase in premiums. And you're hearing it, you're going to be hearing a lot of this stuff in the next couple months out from Washington. So I just want to, because we're in this beautiful space, I just guys want to close your eyes for one second, right? I have to do this to you all. It's wonderless after all. Close your eyes, and I'm going to put something out there. Imagine if your healthcare system focused on one thing, and that one thing is your health. Imagine what that would look like. Would you go see the doctor? Is, doc, is, is going to the doctor good for your health, right? That put, your, put that question out there as well. You can open your eyes. And I hope what you, will, you saw was what we call this, right? This is the WHO's definition of health. And I think it's important to remember this because it's not the absence of infirmity, right? Health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. My wife likes to call it, she does, she's trained in positive psychology, and she says, just because you're not blah doesn't mean you're happy, right? We wanna get you north of neutral. We want you to get higher. We want you to get enlightened. We want you to be the best you can be, the best well-being you can have. Why? Because it's really simple, right? This is a study out of Harvard University, and this has been replicated over and over and over again, that most of the things that are killing us in our society today are preventable. 80% of heart disease, stroke, and diabetes, and 70% of cancer can be prevented by not smoking, by, not, by exercising, managing stress, eating a healthy diet. So that's the good news, right? And this is where it goes, gets better, okay? So this is the good news here, that all this stuff can be prevented if we actually take a lifestyle approach. And so this is what I've been doing for the last 15 years. So these are actual real prescriptions, and if you can't read it, uh, I'll, I'll just tell you a little bit about what they mean, they say. This is an eat real food 365, eat a whole food plant-based diet 365 days, eat fruits and vegetables. So these are actually prescriptions, and what I've noticed is that when I give my patient a prescription, they're more likely to fill it, right? And so I have prescriptions like this for yoga, I have prescriptions like this for meditation. And the other thing I really feel proud about doing is that I've actually, 
have this philosophy that if we teach the teacher, they will teach the student, right? And people still come to the doctors expecting them to know about health, nutrition, food, right? And sadly, we're not taught that, right? I, I, if you guys don't know this fact, 25% of medical schools don't teach any sort of nutrition in medical school training. And in fact, in postgraduate training, when you're in residency and fellowship, you're actually not required to learn anything about nutrition. But again, the slide I showed you before, 80% of this stuff can be prevented by a healthy diet. So what I've been doing for the last 10 years is taking doctors out of the hospital and into the kitchen and then teaching them how to cook a whole food plant-based diet at a culinary school. And when I first started doing this, they were saying no one would ever sign up. And for the last six years, twice a year, we've had wait lists. Doctors want to know more about nutrition because they want to know more so they can pass that information over to you. This is a collaboration between my wife Julie and I and then again, teaching the teacher. We've taught doctors, residents, how to actually tap into the relaxation response using meditation and yoga so that they can again talk to their patients about incorporating these type of lifestyle prescriptions into their daily life. But I think the thing I'm most proud about is this. So this is the first ever rooftop garden on a hospital, on a hospital that feeds the patients this beautiful bounty of stuff, right? At least in New York, our food in our hospitals is terrible. Right? And actually, they contribute to the exact same thing they're trying to treat in the hospital. Right? So, an homage to the Victory Gardens of World War II, we actually decided to plant our own garden on top of a hospital in New York City. And if anybody wants to know how I did that, it's another two hour talk. Um, one thing I can tell you it's persistence, persistence, persistence. There's about 25 no's before you get to that maybe. One maybe, and then eventually in about two years, you're going to get a yes. So this is the first ever edible rooftop organic garden farm on a hospital in New York where we feed what I call my patients and the staff from rooftop to bedside. Pretty cool. And so that leads me to my next thing, and this is what I want to focus on today, fresh. So fresh are my five pillars of well-being. If you understand what this all is about at this point, it starts with food, relaxation, exercise, sleep, and happiness. When was the last time your doctor actually talked to you about these five pillars of well-being? And I have found that if you have all of these right, medication is of little need. And this is one of my philosophies, one of my hashtags. In medicine, right, we need more health, less pills, right, simple. And Food, relaxation, exercise, sleep, and happiness. And, you know, in a Q&A, we can dive into each of these deeper. And this is a great quote, and this is based upon the Yellow Emperor. The Yellow Emperor is the traditional Chinese medicine, and the good doctor wouldn't get paid until the patients got better. Now, that's not totally fair, right, because there is some personal responsibility in involved here, right? When you know better, you do better, right? That's what should be happening. But in fact, just because we actually prescribe medications doesn't mean patients take them. And in fact, this is the predominant model. And I really feel this is one of my, this is my motto, right? That I should get paid to take you off medications, not put you guys on medications. And how do I do that? By addressing these five pillars of well-being, how we eat, how we relax, how we move, and how we sleep. But I think the most important part here is how do we find happiness? The Okinawans have a saying called ikigai. Ikigai is your purpose. What gets you out of bed? Right? That's more than just your kids or your wife or your work. It's really what brings you purpose in your life. And I think I love that saying by the Okinawans. And in fact, the Okinawans are one of the blue zones, the people that lived over to 110 times greater than any, any other societies. And I can't do this alone. And I think one of the exercises that I try to offer you guys by closing your eyes is what does a healthcare team look like? Right? Now, I can't do this alone. As you can see here, this is part of my team. Um, we have Michelle Miller, our clinical nutritionist. We have Julie here, and this is a patient. And so what I'll do on our first visit, I'll assess you, and then what I will bring in my team, my fresh team, right? We're called a, a, a tribe called Fresh, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I'll show you my tribe later. But again, I can't do this alone. And I, to, to imagine that the way we have done it for the last 200 years is the way we, we, we should be doing it for the next 200 is absolutely insane. And this is my tribe. So we actually have in downtown Brooklyn. Why am I in Brooklyn? Because I practice in Manhattan. That's where I built my, my garden. And because of what they call the restricting covenant, I couldn't practice in New York City. So I had to go beyond the rivers and into the hippest 
and coolest <laughs> borough in New York, um, Brooklyn. And I partnered with my, uh, a very good friend of mine, Rudy, who, Dr. German from Physiologic, who has had a chiropractor and massage center in Brooklyn for 13 years. And we opened up this space. It was on the idea that we have to do it all under one roof. So we offer everything from acupuncture to yoga, all under one roof. And just imagine all the therapies, right? Chinese medicine, massage, chiropractic medicine, physical therapy, Pilates, yoga, positive psychology, clinical nutrition, all under one roof. And the coolest thing is I go down the hall and I talk to my acupuncturist. Hey, why don't you take a look at this person's back pain? Because this pill is not gonna help them. You might help them. And then send them to physical therapy as well. So this is part of my team. And I wanna introduce something to you that I'm really, really excited to show. This is the world premiere Actually, not the world premiere, because we did show it up in Canada. But this is the U.S. premiere of Fresh's video. It's two minutes long, and I think you'll be entertained. Fresh Med is an integrative medicine practice at Physiologic that focuses on healing the whole person by combining conventional medicine, including medications, clinical nutrition, functional medicine, health coaching, and advanced and comprehensive testing. The FRESH model is an acronym for the five pillars of total well-being, food, relaxation, exercise, sleep, and happiness. Food. Food matters. It's the fuel for our bodies to live and thrive. Based on your own individual metabolic and lifestyle needs, the FRESH team will help you discover the foods that truly nourish you, one plate at a time. Relaxation. We live in a fast-paced world trying to keep up with the societal demands and expectations. The stress is killing us. The Fresh Team will help you learn how to make meditations part of your daily routine to better manage your response to stress, one breath at a time. Exercise? Sitting is the new smoking, so get up and move. The Fresh Team will help you set realistic fitness goals by finding things you enjoy, the key to long-lasting results, one step at a time. Sleep. Sleep is a medical necessity. Nobody can function without it. The Fresh team will help you take a closer look at the reasons why you may have trouble falling and staying asleep, and will help you get the Z's you need, one nap at a time. Happiness. Living with gratitude, meaning, and purpose enriches and improves our quality of life. Using the tools of positive psychology, the Fresh team will support and encourage you to focus on your strengths and pursue activities that truly make you happier, one smile at a time. The Fresh Med team at Physiologic is made up of an internal and integrative medicine specialist, Dr. Robert Graham, and certified holistic health coach, Julie Graham. Together, and along with the rest of the Physiologic team, they have been able to transform people's lives by preserving health and reversing many chronic conditions and diseases through their scientifically backed, safe, effective, and personalized programs. If you are one of many people who have seen doctor after doctor compressed into a seven minute visit, and been told to take this pill, or if you're tired of having to only rely on medications or been told that there's nothing wrong with you, we can help you. Try a fresh approach and let us show you how you can regain control of your health and well-being. That's the U.S. premiere of Fresh Video. And so as a doctor, I have to leave you with one final comment here. This is my prescription, okay? So my prescription using the five pillars of well-being is that we have to eat more plants, meditate five minutes a day, and if you don't have five minutes a day to meditate, you probably need 20 minutes a day, <laughs> right? Exercise, simply walk, get out, particularly, preferably out in nature, 20 minutes a day at the minimum. Just catch some breaths, take some steps. Sleep seven, eight hours a night. People that sleep less, less than six hours a night have a 13% increase of mortality. I think sleep is so important and we do a lot of corporate wellness events and I would say sleep is probably the, the second most important part in terms of uh, people wanting us. And I think the last thing, and, I, and I, this is why we're all here, right? It's because other people matter. Surround yourself with people that have the same goals and aspirations that you have. Aim higher than who you are, because if you surround yourself with those people, you will actually reach that point. You will, it will encourage you to get there. And i like to close with our quote. This is our kind of quote. When it comes to our health, it all starts with food, but the, at the end of the day, what we all truly want in life is to be happy. And I am so happy to be here with all of you and to 
take your questions. And if you're interested in following us, like us, love us um, on Fresh Med NYC on, on, on the website. And actually, we're going to be introducing some telemedicine in the next couple months. So if you can't come to Brooklyn, which I wish you all could, and come experience it for yourself, we will come to you. So contact us at Fresh Med. Thank you so much, Wonderless, and I am more than happy to take some questions.